Twilight's Nightmare, Chapter 21, Part 4. Celestia, I am borrowing all the legal books from the restricted section of the archive. No need to be alarmed. The sound of Spike's quill seeming overly loud within the spell. P.S. Also proving why you need to update your wards. If you want to know where they need improvements, see my word improvements report version 6, page 23, and go from there. Spike finished the last word. Send it. Twilight commanded. Spike exhaled his green flames, burning the scroll, and sending its way onto Celestia. Twilight stepped back from the hug, gaining a bit of distance before her horn lit. Multiple spell arrays forming in the air rotating around her horn. Twilight started muttering numbers and complicated equations, eyes moving rapidly as if she was reading something in front of her. Star teleported onto Luna's back and started taking notes, watching her mother's feat of spellcraft. This was clearly a higher dimensional spell, an extremely complex one at that. Luna dared not do anything to interrupt Twilight, because the amount of power was extreme for any pony other than an alicorn. The spell stopped, making sense to her after the seventh dimension arrays were added. Luna looked Cadence and mentally sent, Leave. This will not be comfortable with your condition. Cadence dropped the sound spell and reached for Star with her aura. But I want to stay here. Star whines, but didn't struggle as she was placed on Cadence's back. We can watch from over there. Cadence said, moving away to the far side of the room. Ponies! It would be wise to give Twilight Sparkle adequate space. Luna spoke in the royal Canterlot voice. It seemed the ponies of Ponyville remembered the Lesson Zero event. Some galloped, but most simply trotted to the exit, making their way to safety. Only her family and friends didn't retreat. Twilight cast her spell, all the arrays collapsing down to a single point. And in a crack, her horn went out. 59, 58. She counted down the minute, second by second. The countdown cleared all but the bravest ponies from the room. Pinky shouting before running out of the room. It's gonna do something! Might have helped. As the count neared its end, the sound of Twilight's voice and Star's quills were the only sounds. Precisely on time, with the flash of a teleport and the accompanying pop of displaced air. A large number of old tomes teleported in, forming walls of books around Twilight. Twilight's aura lifted all the books, forming them into a ring around her in the air. Each book, opening to the first page as they started to rotate around her, each advanced, one page per rotation. Scrolls teleported in and around her, as dozens of quills set to work, taking notes. Twilight? Yes, Elena? Twilight responded without looking from her work. How did you get these books here? Celestia only uses wards rated to protect against spells using up to the sixth dimension. So that is all normal teleportation and extra dimensional storage spells. But what I did was construct a virtual 11 dimensional spell by combining two high order spells. Luna's eyes widened at hearing Twilight casually describing impossible spellcraft as if it was nothing out of the ordinary. Now, when my spell came into contact with a ward, the first six dimensions were caught by the ward, and that part of the spell then collapses in such a way to leave a breach just large enough, thus leaving the way clear for my fifth dimensional target discriminating teleport spell that was tacking along. Twilight smiled with pride. All it takes is a few advanced mathematical transformations applied to a hyperchance location spell theory. And she had better take my report seriously now, and she said that no pony could do it. Ha. Huh. So you used numbers to breach my sister's strongest wards? Yes. Naturally, it would be impossible for any pony to brute force their way in through Celestia's ward. Might I ask what you're looking for? Hmm? Oh, I'm just looking into if we have any other options other than us getting married, me being executed, or exiled. Twilight said before mumbling. Don't want to give Celestia a legal reason to kill me, after all. Um, m married? Luna blinked. Me? Married to Twilight? For the first time, Luna looked at Twilight, and really looked at her taking in her developing alicorn body. We are already friends, and she... she is rather appealing. Then her muttered words registered. But she thinks that my sister wants to kill her? Luna thought in alarm. Twilight nodded and floated her pages of notes over to Luna. Luna ended her musing and accepted the notes in her aura. They were very thorough, even going into lengthy detail about the legalities of alicorn fragments and who was responsible for their actions. Everything to do with what the law says should happen to two unwed princesses with a foal. Is Celestia a bad pony? Star asked from the back of the approaching cadence. All eyes were on Star. One by one, the books were placed onto the ground, and Twilight's horn dimmed. Twilight's eyes darkened, and Cadence's wing draped reassuringly over her back. My sister is not a bad pony, as you put it. She has merely just made some mistakes. 
Twilight growled, her mane rippling with hot flames. Cadence's wing recoiled, fortunately unburnt. Twilight's friends backed off, but only seemed concerned. Shining fell back, first to his guard training, standing ready, his horn lit. Velvet and Nightlight jumped back, nearly falling over, fearful of the sudden outburst. Star sat calmly, drawing and taking notes. Miss- Twilight started, Cadence cutting her off with a gentle hoof. Twilight- Cadence said reassuringly, placing a hoof on her shoulder. Twilight took a deep breath, letting the flames die. Sorry. She said sheepishly, looking to her worried parents. Some of your anger is justified, but if you are to hate my sister, then hate her for the truth and not your fears. Luna said to Twilight. Turning to the others, she continued. We alicorns will return shortly. We have things to discuss that are not for mortal ears. Cadence nuzzled Shining and moved up to Luna, offering Twilight's parents a reassuring smile. Cadence's wing poked Luna. No need to be so dramatic, Auntie. The three of us just need to have a little chat in private, that's all. Luna nodded. We entrust our daughter's care to you until our return. Star, can you look after my friends? Twilight asked, leaning closer to her filly. Then she whispered, I would feel much safer if you were here to protect them. Star nodded seriously, accepting her mission. A flash of magic and a helm and a cape appeared on Star, both laced with an impressive amount of defensive magic. The bad ponies won't get them, she declared. Twilight smiled proudly at her. I have faith in you, my little Star. She then looked up at Luna and nodded. With how powerful and well-equipped Star seems, that faith was well-placed. In a fair fight, she could literally take four of my night guard if she knows even a single offensive spell. Luna thought. Cadence kissed Shining before leading the two other alicorns out of the room. Cadence led them to a dull section of wall in the middle of nowhere. Twilight, if you would. How- oh, okay. Twilight said before knocking on the wall in an intricate pattern. The wall rotated, revealing a secret room. Twilight trotted in, teleporting a blanket over some wrapped boxes. Once all the ponies were inside, Twilight closed the door. Twilight, this was the catalyst of thy forebear's end. Luna said, extracting the golden tome from her shadow and using her prehensile mane to offer it to Twilight. Hesitantly taking it in her aura, Twilight drew it closer. She opened it and began to read. Caden simply observed the two of them. By how her gaze was slightly unfocused, she was using her gift to see into the heart of ponies. Why did she test me with the spell? Twilight was clearly forcing her voice to be calm. It came across as icy. Twilight was far easier to read, not having Cadence's years of diplomatic training. So sister left different gaps in your training. She did not. Twilight glared at Luna. Peace. Peace, dear Twilight. Listen, and you shall learn the truth. Luna said, laying down, her shadow formed into cushions. One of your instructors at my sister's school hated you. Did you know that you were meant to fail to hatch Spike's egg? It was meant to be an impossible task, one by which the teachers could assess your reaction. And this was given to me as an impossible test? Yes. He was insistent that unless you underwent such an ordeal, you had no place being in the school. That no pony had not been tested such should be trusted with magic at all. Where is he? Twilight growled, her eyes blazing with power. Unfortunately, he has long departed from this life. Then how did you find this out? Did Celestia tell you? Twilight asked, doubt evident. Some, but I confirmed it with my night guard. They were here spying and waiting on my return. Luna said, and she could see Twilight's keen mind taking in all the implications. Twilight summoned cushions for both her and Cadence from a pocket. Cadence winced. Sorry. Twilight said, laying down, and she closed the book. Cadence was sitting down next to her, ready to provide any needed comfort. The spell has no function to recombine the soul of the caster. It relies on the fact that alicorn souls can take care of it on their own. Twilight flicked back and forth between a few pages. In fact, if it weren't for the communication links, this spell would have instantly killed us. But me? Twilight shook her head. There really was no way. No way. Twilight trailed off, looking at the text. No, dear Twilight. This book, this tome of ancient knowledge, was a poison chalice. It was the perfect tool to assassinate the elements of magic. Twilight glared at the book, opening it to the first page, and she began writing. This spell is a trap. Casting it will kill any mortal caster when it ends, and any copies of the spell must have this warning. By order of Her Royal Highness Princess Twilight Sparkle. Twilight smiled, offering the book back to Luna. Cadence draped a wing over Twilight. That was very responsible of you, Twilight. My sister is to blame for the seals and her many manipulations. 
But as for your first incarnation's death, her only crime is negligence. She should have noticed what you were learning and stopped you in the weeks that it would have taken you to learn. Luna, I could cast this now. Maybe a few moments to make sure I have a few things triple-checked, though. Really? Yes. And by all accounts, my... The original had a superior grasp of magic. Luna was amazed. I could not learn that spell even with a whole year of study. Well, it's not very well written. I could write up something using half the space, making it three times as easy to learn. Twilight's aura pulled the book back to her. Scrolls and quills appeared as Twilight set to work. The task before her doing more to calm Twilight than any of Luna's words. Twilight began humming a hauntingly familiar tune. Both her head and quill bobbed in time, and Cadence joined in, adding the words. Luna felt a few tears form in her eyes, and took a few long breaths for her to calm herself and let her enjoy her most treasured memory. The feel of her mother's loving embrace of nightmares being chased away by the words of the lullaby. Minutes later, Twilight looked up, offering the improvised spell diagram and instructions. But in this one, her warning was in larger letters at the top of the first page. With all this talk about spellcrafting and whatnot, it makes me think about the Elder Scrolls games, predominantly 3 and 4, Morrowind and Oblivion, where you can craft spells that are broken, but amazing and so fun to use. Anyway, let's sit down for a spell and say hello to our magical donators. Top donators Dash of Evergreen, Peter Coltard, J10 Man, Darkseid, and Ponyman. Courier Cruci, Strix, Zar630, Narwhals, Delta Omega, RuneSlyth9852, Dospo, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Hunter Norman, Austin Rowland, Secret Moon, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brethren Mordred, Ron and Wandering, Endry63, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Jack Cadge, Starlight Glimmer, Squiddy Boy, David E. Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Alex F., Rainbow Dash, Teal Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Zach Rakow, Mr. ECU, Leslie Prickett, Edgar Garcia, One Kingdom One, Nissa Rusan, Vizuri, Dyslexic Character Sheets, and Just Random Boy. Thank you all very much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.